When I first started talking about the Younger Dryas, nobody had ever heard of it except a few. It was in a scientific papers, I'm sure, maybe in the 80s when some of the early studies were first coming out, when they were realizing, without connecting it with any cosmic event, I'll, I'll point that out, for at least a couple of decades of research, there was no connection with a possible cosmic event. The polar wildflower, uh, Dryas octopetala, that gave its name to the Younger Dryas. The Younger Dryas implies that there was also an older Dryas, so the older Dryas, I think, was right there leading up to about 14,600 years ago. Then there was a period called the Balling and then the Alarod. Anyways, there was, the, uh, there was that warming period that led up to the Younger Dryas that was consistent, I think was consistent with Milankovitch forces, which is orbital changes, uh, geometric changes in the orbital relationship of Earth to Sun. Those forces are generally going to be very slow acting. The problem was is that it seemed to have a period of warming, rather gentle warming that occurred between say 14.6 and 15,000 years ago and then the, the lower Younger Dryas boundary that seems consistent with Milankovitch. But then you get to that Younger Dryas boundary and then something happens with extreme rapidity and this is the boundary at which the impact proxies are being found.